Welcome back to the channel guys. Uh, so I've been noticing that a lot of players uh, are switching to Yonix and the V-Core uh, line especially is, is becoming very popular. So wanted to see what the hype was all about. So I got like three rackets with me here. Uh, it's gonna be the 100, the 95, and then the 98. I'm gonna be probably playing with the 95 first. It's probably gonna be the most demanding racket. Um, and uh, I'll let you know how it feels. But yeah. Alright guys, before we get started, I uh, just wanted to let you know in case you missed it. I did a full review of the Vcore 95 and 100 in uh, the previous two videos. I'll put the links in the description box down below. Alright, so the Vico 95 is by far my favorite out of all three. Um, and that is just because I am a player who was raised with a very classic uh, tennis racket. Uh, headlights, more on the heavy side with a smaller head size. Uh, so it comes to no surprise that I liked that one better. Now sure, if I start playing with it for more than, you know, one, two, three hours, I might end up liking maybe the 98. Um, but as far as my uh, direct feel with it, uh, right off the bat, the 95 is the one that feels uh, more natural to me. I really like the control uh, that I get, uh, the more plow through, and also uh, the control. I really feel like this one cuts through the air uh, very nicely. I can get a lot of racket head speed. Uh, the string pattern is 16 by 20, which gives me a little bit more top spin than my pro staff 97 so um this one is really good now uh, what a caution though i would not advise a, a beginner or intermediate player to play with it because it is a demanding racket um you probably benefit more with a, a bigger head size or a racket that is slightly lighter and that is where the vcore 98 and 100 comes into play Alright, I'm gonna switch now to the Vcore 98. Alright, so as you know, I play with a Pro Staff 97, and uh, that's the closest to the 98. But surprisingly enough, I'm not gonna lie, I have to say the 98 was probably my least favorite out of all three. Um, the reason? I don't really know. Uh, to be honest, I don't really have. I don't really have an answer and uh, maybe I need to play longer with it uh, to you know but uh, I right off the bat I was surprised and I still don't know why um, which leads me to that point uh, do not buy rackets uh, based off on solely on you know specs and uh, you know descriptions and, and racket reviews you have you have to go out the store and demo them spend some time playing with the rackets, uh, play some matches, don't forget to serve and uh, get a better feel for, uh, for the racket. And to illustrate my point, let me read the descriptions on Tennis Warehouse of all three rackets just to give you an idea of how similar they seem, um, on paper at least. Yonex adds another chapter to the Vcore 95. Like the previous generation, the stick rewards seasoned ball strikers with an extremely precise ball. Although not as heavy as a traditional player's racket, the Vcore 95 feels remarkably solid for its speedy sub-325 swing weight. Experienced players looking for the undeniable precision of a compact head will love how fast and easy this one plays. Alright, now onto the Vico 98. With its redesigned beam and softer feel, the 2023 Vico 98 continues its reign as one of the game's most well-built player's rackets. Like previous versions, this is a speedy spin monster with great ball feedback. Offering easier power than the Vico 95, the Vico 98 gives you the benefits of a larger margin of error without sacrificing the precision that experienced players crave. Ultimately, this redesigned Vico 98 checks all the right boxes. Experienced players looking for spin, precision, and feel should give this one a very serious look. Another thing I need to make sure of is stay balanced, keep my head balanced, especially at impact. 
don't um, move the body out before the shot. All right, and for the Vico 2023, for 2023, Yonex redesigns the Vico 100 but keeps the raw speed and easy spin of the previous generation. Compared to the Vico 95 and 98, this model is more powerful and forgiving, but it still delivers more than enough control for aggressive targeting. Ultimately, with some impressive changes to the beam and feel, this update checks all the right boxes. Alright, I'm gonna switch to the Vico 100 now. All right, so if I attempt to um, summarize uh, the description of all three rackets, the 95 is more control-oriented, but gives some power to the experienced player. The 98 gives a little bit more power than the 95, but doesn't sacrifice on the control. And the 100 gives a little bit more power than the 98 and the 95, but also doesn't sacrifice on control. Ultimately, all three rackets checks all the right boxes, and the updated versions are just great. So what I'm saying is that the descriptions are simply not enough. Uh, you really need to uh, go demo them, spend some time with them, and uh, see which one you like better. Okay, next word of caution. Beware of the novelty bias. So the novelty bias simply says that the newer version always seemed better than the previous one. It could feel better, uh, you know, more control. It could feel a little bit more powerful. It could feel a little more stable. And I'm not saying they don't. All I'm saying is whenever we, whenever we try something new, because we have the expectation that it should at least perform slightly better, um, our brain already tells us that they are better, even if they're not. Uh, basically, almost like a placebo effect. Um, so, just a word of caution, you know, newer is not always better. Uh, the way you can also, you know, look at it is um, thinking about iPhones, right? Every year you get a new iPhone and it always seems to be a little bit faster and last a little bit longer than the previous version. The problem is that when we do, when we do a comparison, we compare our older iPhone that is already maybe a year or two old that does not perform as well as it used to be when we purchased the new and we compare it to the brand new one at peak performance so the comparison is not really fair um, the second point is that uh, you know if it lasts 30 more minutes a day or if it's you know 0 0.2 seconds faster um, you won't even notice it unless you use both phones simultaneously, which in tennis, you're never going to be using two different rackets. Let's say a Vico 95 and a Vico 98 at the same time, or at least you shouldn't be. You're not going to be playing a match with a Vico 95 and a Vico 100 and switching between games. Um, so what's going to happen is that once you get used to a racket after playing with it for five or ten hours, that will be the feel that you're going to get used to and you won't remember what the other one feels like. All right, so definitely a lot harder to play with this one over the 100. Have to really center that ball. Weight-wise, not don't feel too much of a difference, but definitely more demanding in terms of size and swing weight. All right, doing another game to seven. Now with a Vico 98. And that's probably why the pros don't switch rackets every year or at every racket release. Uh, simply because when they find something that they like, um, they develop their games with it and they start learning how to trust it and they don't want to switch. It takes a lot of time to switch. Now, brands, because they sponsor players, uh, they need to make money. So they need to release new rackets every you know, two years, maybe every three years. And they're gonna paint those rackets differently, right? Not, you know, it's to give a little bit of an update. Uh, you know, a, a fresh paint always makes it feel like it's new. But what happens is that their players are endorsing it. That doesn't mean that they're actually using the rackets. So they're gonna paint their rackets differently, but they're still gonna be using their old rackets. So, for example, Novak Djokovic actually uses a very old racket that was made in the early or the mid 2000 and it's the same thing for Rafa Nadal 
but you're gonna see that every three or four years he's gonna seem to be playing with a different rackets um, but it actually is the same all right so i don't know if it's the 98 or the different strings but it felt a lot harder to control on that one now to the 100. Another thing that you can do uh, before you buy a new racket or demo a new racket is customize your own rackets. Add a little bit of weight here and there um, to see if you can improve your racket or match your racket to your current skill before trying something completely different. Now, you know, this could take a long time and I'm not suggesting that you, you know, spend too much time into that. It's still more important for you to improve your technique to improve your fitness to improve your you know your strategy and your mental game than your actual racket the racket is just the tool you are the player that's more important when it comes to performance but uh, don't hesitate to buy a little bit of lead tape or tungsten tape and uh, put it in different places in your rackets uh, to customize it just in case you don't know let me give you a little bit of an idea of how that tape affects the racket. If you add it um, at the 12 o'clock, that means all the way up at the top of the frame, that will add a lot more of that swing weight, um, which is also like plow through, um, but it will be a lot harder to maneuver. The opposite will be adding that weight to the handle. And that will affect swing weight the least, uh, but it will feel a lot more solid. Um, and that has a lot of impact, especially on shots like the returns and the volleys. And then anything in between will affect, you know, swing weight and, and recoil weights in different ways. A lot of people would place the lead tape at 3 and 9 o'clock. That way it adds... Uh, a little bit more swing weight but not as dramatically as if you were to add it at 12 o'clock and adds also more stability so if you were to hit the ball more toward the frame if you kind of miss the center it will add more of that stability and it will be easier to handle these fast balls for my own racket uh, my pro staff 97 i actually have weight in the handle um, because it felt a little bit too light, a little bit too shaky on returns, especially when I was, when I play against players that serve really well. Um, I needed to have that extra stability. That's what I'm using now, and I'm sure that it will change in the future as my game evolves. My equipment need to adapt to my new game, to my new skills, and that is the normal path of a tennis player's journey. By the way, I would love to know about your racket journey and if you have any recommendations for me as a Wilson Pro Staff 97 user. Completely off topic guys, it is about 105 degrees right now in Las Vegas. Um, this was about 8.30 a.m. It's gonna hit 110 later in the afternoon. So would love a thumbs up um, just for the effort uh, really sweating here uh, but enjoying making the content for you guys nonetheless the reason why I cannot also stop practicing is because we have sectionals coming up in August uh, we ended up first the best 4-5 team in Las Vegas um, in the uh, in the spring season we won district against the second best team and uh, we're going to Salt Lake City Utah for sectionals it will be my first time it will probably be very hot probably more humid so um i have to practice i have to keep practicing and uh hopefully getting used to the conditions we'll probably have to play two matches a day i believe like maybe twice on twice on friday and uh, if we win twice on saturday and if we do win we'll play nationals i think in arizona another one of those super hot places so might as well get used to it right now and uh, i'm sure the likes comments and subscribed will greatly motivate me to keep practicing and keep demoing new rackets for you guys and it's really not that easy to play with different rackets especially during the same uh, tennis session it really takes some time to um, get used to them 
I also want to say a special thanks to Rob, who's always letting me um, record all these videos and um, always is available to play. That's uh, it's a big that's a big thing. Um, I know it's really hot. I, I know it's uh, not the most ideal condition to play tennis, but um, Rob loves tennis. He plays a ton of tennis. He's very passionate. He wants to be better. I want to be better. I want to make more videos. So, thank you, Rob. Also, if you are interested in uh, playing with me, uh, don't hesitate to uh, DM me on Instagram. Or you can also comment uh, under these uh, videos or any videos for that matter. Um, I would love to play with any of you. Always happy to play more tennis. Uh, I think on the Instagram it might be a little bit easier. Uh, just so that it's, it's like a private message. But um, I will respond regardless of the way you reach out. Um, trying to be as um, available and accessible as possible. I'm really trying to... Uh, you know, grow the channel, and uh, you know, grow my uh, my uh, social media presence, and um, you guys by you guys watching and, and following is a big motivation for me to keep doing it. So uh, don't hesitate, and uh, I'll be happy to play with you.